Well, talking about the side effects, this is a good segue to touch on that point, and importantly, how to manage them. I know we talked about the prophylactic growth factors, which was part of the trial design when it comes to neutropenia. Isabel, with lurvinectidine now combined with IO as part of maintenance, what can we expect in terms of the side effects and how to manage them? Some clinical pearls around that, please. Sure. So, yes, I think we've spoken about the neutropenia or just so cytopenias in general that develop from induction chemotherapy, and our hope is that patients will recover some marrow, marrow reserve from that. Um, but we do see neutropenia, we do see cytopenias, we do see that includes anemia, thrombocytopenia, and neutropenia, so all cell lines. And I think it was about 73% of patients that continued the GCSF prophylaxis going into the maintenance setting um, upon randomization. And I do think that this is standard practice. Even in the second line setting, it is recommended to, to if you're giving lurbanectidin, to offer GCSF support given its known baseline myelosuppressive effects. Um, so I, I do think that this is not a surprise, and I do think that this should be standard practice. The last thing we want is to have a patient get admitted for neutropenic fever or, or to have to dose reduce because of neutropenia, not because the patient is not able to tolerate it or, or having other side effects. So I think if we can you know, get ahead of things, that might be a good thing to do and just sort of be proactive rather than reactive. So I do agree with that. Um, and while there were grade three and grade four toxicities, I don't think there was anything that was unexpected. When looking at the tornado plot, as Stephen had said earlier, I think we saw fatigue, we saw nausea, um, and we saw cytopenias as, as, the, main, as the main side effects. Um, there are, are other more rare side effects that can happen. I think there's rhabdomyolysis, which is reported. Um, and I actually have had a case of that um, that I inherited, which is um, unfortunately devastating, but, um, but can happen, um, but manageable. And if you keep your eyes open for it, I think that's something that you need to be aware of. Um, but these are, these are manageable, and we can be proactive about these things. And, and I do think that with the right support and with the right knowledge going into it, you can support your patients. And I do think that this is the right regimen to go ahead with for the right patient. It's important to keep all these side effects in mind, but thankfully, as you stated, Isabel, that discontinuation due to toxicity in on forte with lurpinexidin was rather low. TCNA, any additional thoughts with regards to managing these side effects, especially when you get started the patient on 3.2 milligram per meter square, do you dose reduce to 2.6 milligram per meter square, or rather give them a break and let the counts recover and then initiate at the same dose? It definitely depends on the degree of um, decrease of the counts that we're seeing and sort of the clinical implications. You know, when you think about neutropenia, you know, that's important, but really what is most important is, is there clinical significance? Was there febrile neutropenia? And on the trial, the rates of febrile neutropenia were very low. Um, and the rates of in infections, grade three, four infections was also low. So I think that is sort of the most important piece of that. But certainly in the trial, there was sort of the median treatment duration with the combination was actually double that of a tezomonotherapy. So AEs that develop during treatment can be managed with dose hold um, and dose modification. I think it depends on how the patient is doing for, you know, low counts despite GCSF that would require a dose hold and then certainly require a dose reduction. Um, and I think, you know, when you look at the trial data, we did see that there was higher rates of dose interruptions or modifications. It was 38% with Lurby plus Atezo compared to 13.8% with Atezo monotherapy. Again, same thing for the fatigue. I think for the fatigue, if patients are developing cumulative fatigue, um, especially higher grade level of fatigue impacting, you know, their day-to-day -day -day life, dose hold and dose reductions can be very effective to managing that. And this is where art of oncology comes in. I know there's some comfort of managing these side effects because, again, we've been using lorbanectidin as second-line treatment option. Now we're just moving it uh, in earlier lines as maintenance. 